This is John McAllister with Around the State, a part of the McAllister Scouting Report. And today, my podcast, we're going to talk with a uh, University of Michigan football player, Joel Honigford. Joel is originally from Sugar Creek, Ohio, down among the Amish. He played at a smaller school, Garraway High School, and he's he's done a heck of a job. He's pers- he's been persistent. He's persevered, and uh, he played a lot last year at tight end for Michigan. Started five games. He originally went as an offensive lineman. I think the world of him. I've known him since he was a high school senior, and uh, he's just a great kid. Thank you, and sit back and enjoy my podcast. Joel Hanaforg is my guest today. How are you doing on this chilly day in Ohio? And, of course, you're in Michigan. Yep. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We got about, like, six to eight inches of snow up here. So, really? kind of just trudging through that. How far do you live from Michigan University of Michigan, then? Uh, I The facility is, like, right across the street. So, oh, I literally, okay. like, when I got to go to workouts or stuff like that, I just walk across the street and put my ID up to the door and just get right in. Well, that's good. I used to park uh, about two more streets from there. You know, the main drag right beside the Schembeck. Or I used to park a couple. When I go to games, I'd park like three streets over. Didn't cost anything, and everything was great. Joel, let's talk about. First of all, I got a little background. What are you doing right now? So you know, with, with football, you tell me you're at University of Michigan. Tell me what you're gonna, what are you doing right now? So right now, um, headed into my sixth year. Actually, got the opportunity to take a sixth year uh, because of COVID. We got like an extra year, so that season two years ago uh, it was like a free season. Essentially, we only played six games, um, so they gave us the year. Actually, I think they gave everybody the free right. year in the NCAA. But um, so I just got done with like technically my fifth year. Um, and graduated mechanical engineering, and uh, now I'm in a master's program and headed in my sixth year. So okay. pretty excited. Now, at first, you weren't thinking of that, were you? No. So I was originally planning on just finishing up my fifth year here and then taking my shot at the NFL and kind of seeing uh, where things played out. Um, I actually got an internship at Caterpillar, like the uh, heavy equipment company, last summer. So I worked for them um, just so I could have, like, multiple options like say nfl didn't work out i'd have something to fall back on there and um so yeah i wasn't planning on taking a sixth year and then towards like the middle of the season um my coaches kind of talked to me about you know maybe coming back for another year uh give me a better opportunity uh as far as going to the nfl and stuff like that and so i was like yeah i i kind of considered it over time wasn't too sure uh and then ultimately one, you can't play college football the rest of your life. Right. And two, it would give me another year of film to put on and, and add to the resume. And plus, you know, you went to Michigan as an offensive lineman. Yeah. And, uh, and then you then you last year they came to you, right? So how about playing some tight end or two years ago? I yeah. Forget, I forget yeah. how you really haven't technically you haven't played there that long. No. So this, oh. this uh, help you even more. Yeah. So two you years, have to lose a little bit of weight or not? Yeah. So two years ago, I was about, I was rated like 305 pounds. Oh my. Um, which was like the heaviest that I had been. And like, I really struggled to gain weight and like finally like got up to 305 pounds. Like didn't feel great, but um, like I was competing for a starting spot. Uh, and then um, just ended up not starting. And then, And, like, our camp uh, that year, Coach Harbaugh um, asked me if I wanted to move tight end. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Move tight end. Um, So, two years ago, I I played a little bit. I think I got around, like, 100 snaps in six games um, on offense. And then in the spring, 
uh, that following year, uh, he had came up to me and he was like, Hey, like, don't worry about keeping weight on and being a big tight end. Like you can just lose the weight. So from that spring up until this past season, um, lost about 50 pounds mm -hmm. at 255 right now. And then played this full last season, like truly as a tight end opposed to like an extra offensive lineman. Good. Okay. I, I, a re couple of reasons. I, I was, I've been so impressed because let's go back to the beginnings now and you've done so well. The beginnings, you're from Sugar Creek or Garraway High School mm -hmm. and a small football program. And you and I go way back. Tell, I, I remember going and watching you play baseball, third base. At, and I think your brother was somebody playing too, I think at the time, maybe. Yeah. And I talked to your dad for a while there. And so, you know, I've been doing this a long, long, long time. So I think I have a little bit of wisdom and I remember that you play, you, so that's, I used to see guys. So tell me about your high school experience. So in high school, so like coming from a small high school, you don't really see like a lot of like really good talent. Like I was going against guys a lot smaller than me. Um, and like, I was like a good football player in high school. Um, and I was able to put up good film and then, um during the summers i would go to like all of these football camps like I, one summer i went to like nine football camps at, at like different colleges like purdue illinois ohio state michigan michigan state like i went to just a whole bunch and i did that between my freshman and sophomore year um i went to like nine different ones and then my sophomore to junior year i went to like six or seven more um actually my first offer um my sophomore year by uh miami of ohio i think it was early in my sophomore year um which i remember that because uh coach like they they weren't allowed to talk to us um and i remember like coach wallet calling me and and telling me that they had offered me which is kind of cool but it's tough coming from a small school because you're not facing that talent and like mm -hmm schools aren't necessarily like like Garraway is not like a powerhouse football school where they're constantly producing guys that go to division one right so like i mean you helped and then with going to different camps and just i mean coach wallach knows people you know people and and like kind of getting my name out there for myself i was able to like collect quite a few scholarships um and then ultimately led me to michigan but um yeah, I mean, it's not like once you get your name out there and people know who you are, then they'll look. Yeah. It's just like that matter of getting your name out there. You know, you really got to like go to camps. And like the nice thing about those camps is that you say I go to a camp at Michigan. Great. Like the University of Michigan is there running it. But there's also like other schools there, like maybe Toledo will be there. And then some other like Division two school, like Grand Valley, stuff like that, they'll also be there. So say like Michigan doesn't want you, well, there's other schools and there's other options there that are going to notice you regardless. Oh, for sure. I totally agree. And that's why, and I think kids are, prospects are doing more and more of it now. And I think they sometimes, when they're younger, go to a smaller camp and just see what's going on. Get the whole, and they'll run the same way. When I say smaller camp, as opposed to Michigan or Penn State or Ohio State or any of the, go to a Bowling Green, go to Kent State, because they do the same exact things mm -hmm. when you're younger, and because you know, they, and they'll have fewer people, and then you learn what's going on. So when you do go to a bigger camp, and you know, I'm, but here's the thing with you, so much is you, you haven't, you're coming from a small program, and that was tough because you're not used to facing those guys. You can't. You, you learn that. And, you and well, I, I know you had a little tough time at the to that competition and stuff, yeah. but it all worked out. And the other thing I would say, you're a good athlete. I mean, you're a big good athlete. So that's why I think a lot of people, I search everybody like that because, and then people look at guys like you and say, okay, what can we do with him in three years? Uh, now, a lot of schools don't have the time to, I think it's a mistake. They don't have a time. They don't make time to develop guys. And I think that's what, like, look at you now. 
you know, look, you've developed so much. And I think kids need to know that about camps. And, and if you're coming from a smaller program, I think it really anything almost under three, Division three, pro, I mean, high school programs, I really think you've got to get experience and, yeah. go to, you know, and work out and stuff. Now, the problem is, and I, I want to, I, I get carried away on this stuff. The problem is you got a lot of guys out there that think they're all gurus, quarterback gurus, lineman gurus, and, and strength guru. And I, and that's not, that's what's shaky a little bit. And I don't like that, but yeah. okay, then you went to Michigan. How, tell me about the recruiting process as you can remember. We're talking to high school juniors. Now it's all together different with COVID and all this stuff. And now with this transfer portal, I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but tell me what's re, what should kids, how should they get ready for recruiting? Um, so the way that I did it in high school and the way that I would still tell people now is you have to shoot for the stars. Like you have to like, like, Hey, this, like, if I could dream to go to this place, like this is where I want to go, like reach out to them, like hit them up or whatever, but also have some options that you're like realistically like, yeah, like I definitely could go here and play. So like, I mean, I was like shooting for the stars in Michigan and uh, Oklahoma, Auburn schools like that. Um, and like, ultimately that stuff fell into place for me. Um, but like, that's not the way it is all the time. And so you also have to have schools that you're like, okay, yeah, like, I would be comfortable going here. Like I could see myself here and realistically could like play right. here. Right. But, like for me, like I know real early, like my first offer, Miami of Ohio, but I remember um, I went to a camp at the university of Finley because they were like, if you come here, like we'll offer you a full scholarship. And I was like, yeah, like that would be good because like say nothing else works out. Like this would be right. good to have. So you have to like, you have to have very good self-awareness. And like, as you go through, people will kind of let you know, like what kind of a player you are. And that's important, but you also like, you need to know your limits and then, you know, shoot for the stars, but also have schools to where, you know, like, yeah, that's like very attainable for me. Without right. it. That's really good. That's really good. I, I, I agree with that. And I think that you have to go after, you got to shoot for your dream. You got to get stars. You got to, and, and I think that's what drives a lot of people. And then I, I think that's really huge. And uh, the, tr the other thing with that, and we'll talk later, is that if you're good enough, and, and say if you're say if you're going, and now you're going to get looked at. Because well, number one, you're from you're University of Michigan. Number two, you're you've gotten bigger and stronger. You're a good athlete. So pros are going to come around, and they go every place. Yeah. And check out guys and stuff. And so if you're good enough. You go to University of Tiffin or go to Ashland. You know, that's proven at Ashland. They got guys right now in the league. And yeah. Toledo has guys in the league. Play it. Not not, not on the taxi squad. I mean, that, that's good. So, and, and, and you've learned all that, which is really, I think, huge. Mm -hmm. As for a portal really quickly, how is that going to be a road, uh, a stumbling block for a lot of high school guys? So... This is how I see it. So you look at a guy like me um, coming out of high school. I want, I can think him out of high school, like 273 pounds, which mm -hmm. like, that's not going to cut it to start in like a big 10 football game. And I knew that, like, I knew that I was like a developmental guy. I was fully aware of that. Knew it was going to take time. So, I mean, so as I go through my years, I don't end up, I get some time like my second year, like in a few like blowout games, stuff like that. But I didn't get legitimate time until, um, my true senior year, so my fourth year, is when I really started playing, and I got about 100 snaps at tight end. Um, the thing with the transfer portal is that guys are not going to want to like take that time yeah. to be successful, and it's an, like I've seen it with guys on our team. Like if they're not playing in their second or third year, they're like, "All right, I'm gone," yeah. and they think that's just it for them, and it's not. Like if you look at me, like I gained my success and like where I'm at towards the end of my career here in Michigan and if I would have just left because I was like oh I'm not playing yet like I would not be in the position that I'm at, at right now yeah. like it's nice because like yeah say you're like in a bad situation and you right, don't it. right 
But if it's more motivated by, oh, I'm in my second year, I'm not going to play next year yet, I'm leaving. I don't really agree with that. I mean, like speaking from experience, like <laughs> you've been there, man. <laughs> yeah, like you got to write. I, I know your history a little bit. You've been there with that. Yeah, it's all good. It's all positive. But okay, well, so what advice would you give the high school seniors? Because you know, you know, coaches are overlooking those guys because they're going to the transfer portal. College coaches. Yeah. So what would you say to that? What would you yeah. give them? I would just say that, like, you really do have to stick it out. Like, as, as tough as it is and you think it might be, like, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Like, you can't just, like, like, you're young. You can't just give up on it like that and, like, just jump ship to something else. Like, you have to, like, trust the process. Like, you really do just have to trust it. Just work hard and, like, do what you know how to do and do it as hard as you can and let things fall into place. Don't just get stingy and then automatically jump ship. That's true. Well, that's really good. Uh, talk about your, what was your big adjustment now coming from offensive line to tight end? I mean, talk to, talk to the kids about making those kind of adjustments. What was your biggest adjustment? Yeah. So initially moving to tight end, like as an offensive lineman, you don't need to know formations. It's like not important to you. Like if you're a right tackle, you're always a right tackle. That's right. just how it is. And and same thing with like coverages and stuff like that. Like it doesn't really, I mean, in some instances it does pertain to you as far as like blitz packages and things like that. But right. you know, for majority of the time, you, like you don't really need to know that stuff. So moving to tight end, you know, I had to understand, like, start to relearn the offense, like, as far as, like, pass concepts and formations, and then off those pass concepts, identifying coverages and how to, you know, convert routes based on coverages. And then as far as blocking goes, at a, at tight end, you do a lot more um, blocking around the edge and blocking at the second level on the, on the perimeter. And, like, my perimeter blocking, like, I still have a lot to improve there. But um, I think I, like, I did really well because, like, coming from offensive line to tight end, I knew how to block. Like, I, I've been learning how to block for three-plus years up to that point as right. an offensive lineman, which I was, like, I, it was easily, like, adaptable for me to, like, understand footwork and things like that because that's right. all I had to learn. Right. And so understanding that and, like, how – and, like, leverage and, you know, how certain guys move and – and really like knowing where the ball is at behind you without actually seeing it was something right. that I also had to adapt to. Cause like when you play inside in the O-line, like you do what you do and like, it just kind of stays right there. Well, when you're tight end, you're out and moving and running, <laughs> like you have to adapt on the run and know where the ball is at behind you. For sure. Okay. Uh, just a couple more things and we'll shut her down here. Uh, tell me, what advice would you give to a freshman, uh, like a high school senior, next year's, he goes, a freshman in college, okay? What do you tell them? What do the, should they look for? Now, you're at UM, you're at University of Michigan, but what would they look for at any place? What should they look for? What What's the homesickness? Was Sugar Creek far away when you were at Michigan then? Was it yeah. a long ways away? I mean, let's face oh. it. <laughs> yeah so i was like a big homebody when i like i left like i did not want to leave home and and like michigan is like three and a half hour drive not too far away oh, but like yeah. i just like going from high school football where you're the man you know you got it all the world in your hands and then you go to michigan where <laughs> there's 25 other dudes coming in with you that were also like top dogs like you're gonna drop right down to the bottom it's just <laughs> how it works like oh. that's football that it's it's not the same as like recruiting. Like you're the man in recruiting. Uh -huh. if you get there, it's like, all right, it's time to go. So, are you telling me college coaches talk to you differently when they're recruiting you, and then when after you get on campus? Well, it's not always sunshine and rainbows, you know. <laughs> I know that, and you know, people don't realize that. Though, I, yeah. mean, real, I mean, as much as I've told people, parents over the years, you know, it's a business. 
it's a business. Recruiting yeah. is a business. Yeah, yeah, we like it. No, and then they find out it is a business. Yeah. And sometimes an ugly business, I think. Yeah, okay. it, it definitely can be. But Tell yeah, me. I would just say that like the most important thing to do when you're going to college, if you're going to play football in college, is that just listen. You don't have to talk. Like, you don't need to get your name out there. Like, strictly by what you do and how you play and how you work will get your name out there to your team. But you just need to listen. There's guys that have been there for so many years before you that know how things operate. Just follow them and listen and, like, just work. That's all you need to do. That's all I did. I didn't talk. I didn't, didn't like, try to really get my name out there and assert myself. I just played hard and ultimately that got me to where i'm at now that's really super now a lot of times when you say that guys think that players think that they're getting their name out by being stupid things and doing I mean, being arrogant and cocky yeah they probably are but not in a good way no, not in a good way. <laughs> talk about and i know you're involved with the uh you know the faith you talk about your faith just a little bit yeah just, so I remember uh, my freshman year going into fall camp. So fall camp uh, in college football is a lot different than fall <laughs> camp in high school football. So <laughs> high school football, like you'll have like some meetings maybe in like a couple hour practice, but fall camp in college football, you will go from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and you'll be at the facility the whole entire time, whether it's meetings, practices, walkthrough, like it doesn't matter. You'll be there the whole time. You'll go home, sleep, and come back and do it again the next day. And my freshman year, we got four days off in August, and that's it. Everything else was that 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I remember, like, like I was, I was getting it handed to me by, like, I was going against guys like Rashawn Gary who are playing for the Packers now. Like, these dudes were, like, manhandling me, and it, it, it was tough for me. And I remember really leaning on my faith there because I was like, you know, like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, this is hard. Like these dudes are destroying me. And it honestly, like, it wasn't that fun. I was getting destroyed. Like just, just right. the truth of it. And the reality of it is like a lot of guys go through that and which was nice um, because you have people to talk to then about it. Um, but no, I really leaned on my faith there. Um, and I, I've done that over the years. And I think um, with the change from offensive line to tight end and like the success that I've kind of had, in these past uh, handful of years, like there's no way that any of that would have happened. Like if I didn't have a faith. That sounds really good. Uh, I, that's super. Cause I believe that I believe the same thing. Okay. We're We're just about done. You got to tell me about playing in the semis of the Nash for the national championship. Tell me wh how much fun was that? Uh, it was incredible. That stadium was sweet. We played in a uh, hard rock stadium down there in Miami. Right, it was right. unbelievable. I mean, like just like the way they had set everything up. It's pretty interesting uh, being to like different bowl games and stuff like that with like the college football playoff. Um, it's not really like a vacational bowl game. So you're not doing a whole lot of stuff during the week besides football. Yeah. Other bowl games, they'll have like activities for you to do and, you know, like go bowling with your team and all this kind of stuff. And, the, and they'll do that every night. But like there, we were like really focused on football, which I loved. I was like all about it. I was like, all I want to do is just focus on the game. And then, you know, getting the, the patch on the jersey and uh, all that kind of stuff was really cool. But like just like the atmosphere there, uh, it was one of the loudest games that I've played in. I think the loudest game I've played in so far was uh, our Nebraska night game. Uh, I could, literally could not hear anything. But, uh, no, it was a pretty surreal experience. Uh, just like being able to be a part of that and have an impact on that game. Obviously, yeah. it didn't go the way we wanted it to, but um, it was it was incredible. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you taking the time to be on here. You know, we've talked off. You know, I've known you for a long time, and I think I even called you or texted you and. Well, when this was all taking place up in Michigan, and uh, it's it's a great experience for you, and yes. I, and it's a great experience for me talking to you, and uh, gosh, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Okay, yeah, I you can't say too much because we're in live, living, let's just say, state of Ohio. We yeah. Live, so we got to be careful, but somehow your faith has gotten you through this. Okay. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you very appreciate much. You. Thanks.